Hi, friends. Let's take a look at this beautiful lady. So here we are in our grand entry hall, or what will be the grand entry hall. So you can see it's a center breezeway, front to back, built in 1836. Now, of course, a lot of the paperwork says 1850s, but if you want to see the way that we know immediately this is not an 1850s home, is this late federal handrail and newel post. This is not an 1850s design. It's much, much earlier. Um, really interesting is a half newel post on this wall. I've actually never seen this architectural element where there's a half newel and there's one at the base and one at the top of the stairs. So really cool elements already. You guys know we're very picky about the architectural elements in the houses that we do. So this is the formal parlor. This is where company would be received. So if we get it moved and this is a bed and breakfast, this will be your formal parlor. But this has the original vernacular plaster work. So I'm going to say this was done locally by a local artisan because I've never seen these corner, they look sort of like seashells, but they're obviously a hand, I'm going to say those were done in place on the ceiling almost like a piping bag and I've never seen those. So this is definitely vernacular work and original to the first period of the home. These are also, you've got your original brass, uh, probably 18, those are probably 1840s period curtain tie backs. They're being used to hold up the curtain rods right now. But those are original, and they would have been down here on the wall to hold the curtains back. So it's great that those are still here. So this room is very, very intact. It's got its original early mantle. That firebox would have been open probably with delft tiles in the back of the firebox. So that'll have to be redone. You're gonna see sneaks of, sneak peeks of Stephen in the background. Stephen is the nephew of the family. <laughs> this would have been the family's parlor. I love these, you can see the faux graining on the inside of the doors. It's still present on the exterior of some of the doors, but it's in here. It would have been on all the doors. So, big project. Big your shoes. Big project will be getting all this paint off so we re-expose the gorgeous faux bois. Now, one of my other favorite elements. These are English carpenter locks. So these are original to the early period as well, and they're extant on every single door in the house. I don't think I've seen, I think maybe one I saw missing. These rooms are massively tall, probably 12 feet downstairs, taller upstairs, which is interesting. Dining room. These closets have been built in, those will have to come out. Um, again, the firebox has been closed in, that would have been a large open hearth but more gorgeous English carpenter locks. And this one hasn't been painted, so you can really see the brass knob, the massive size of that. Look at that, it's huge. Now they've added a kitchen up here, and if we move the house, we won't take this. This will stay here and we'll do another kitchen. used as his master bedroom so he added this bathroom in here so that will come out and this will serve this is probably the room that we would use as the family library the historical uh, depository repository of the house so you could learn all about the family the family history when the house was built who's lived here this family since it's been in one family since the, the uh, 19th century They've got a ton of historical documentation about the home and all the people who've lived here. So we'll have a ton of stuff to show you and tell you. We'll go upstairs. So here's another clue that the house is earlier than 1850. The width of the staircase. You have to remember that this would have been the family bedrooms up here. 
So if this staircase was put into a home in 1856, which is what some of the paperwork says, the staircase would have been made wider to accommodate the dresses of the ladies. But since it's 1836, the staircase can actually be narrower because we didn't have those huge wide hoops. Skirts were much more closer to the silhouette of the body, the actual silhouette. So it's a good clue. Little clues like that, you've got to take into account. Here are more of these gorgeous faux wide doors. This graining is gorgeous. I love the signs of wear from all the hands, over all the generations. Isn't that gorgeous? It still retains all of its original nine over nine windows. This glass has actually been replaced, but this one next to it is still original and wavy. I don't know if you can tell the difference in the video, but most of the panes are still original and in really good shape. This house is in really good shape. You're gonna tear it down. Bathroom has been added in, that'll have to come out. This is what the condition of the whole upstairs was like uh, not that long ago, and Stephen's uncle that lives here did some of the some of the work in the other rooms that you've seen that have been lightly rehabilitated. But we've got another great super early mantle. Look how big this is. <laughs> That's a five foot three inch mantle probably. The ceilings up here are higher than downstairs, but that makes sense if you think about it because this is where the family would have slept. They want that heat as high as it'll go. They want it cool here in the evening. And we are in mid South Mississippi. It is hot here in the summer. Another bedroom that has been Pretty much untouched, I'm going to say since the 1940s, because it retains its original 1940s era wallpaper, which I love, which of course we can't keep and makes me so sad. These little pieces I'm going to show you, these little pieces of border, we call it wallpaper border. Um, there was actually a brand and it was called Trims, T R I M Z. <laughs> That's what they called it, and they used trims all around to separate the wallpaper from the ceiling paper. There's our lovely view across the street of the gas stations. Uh, so we're not going to go out on the porch you can, but this is, it's double portico. This porch, if you see, it's got original hand railings. They're the same shape as the handrail coming up the stairway. It is cantilevered into the house. So you can be walking 20 feet back in the hallway of the upstairs and you can feel the steps on the porch. So if we move this house, we've got to figure out a way to do it without cutting it because we don't want to break those cantilever beams. And one more bedroom. It's strange because they've like redone the floors in this room, but not in the other rooms. But look at these beautiful heart pine. About five inch beams. Floor, floor boards. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Another early mantle. More beautiful faux bois. House is a gem. It is an early, early, early gem. 